like crocodiles and piranhas. But the people here say something even bigger and more deadly is out there. Legendary, monster-sized anacondas. And they are becoming its prey. He's saying that that was 40 to 50 meters long. He had my whole hand in his mouth. The snake pulled me down to the ground, so I was just trying to get my hand back. The girl was lost. No one could find her. The snake had already swallowed her. Anacondas are some of nature's most vicious predators, equipped with razor-sharp teeth and powerful muscles to crush their prey. The teeth of the anaconda are like needles that curve backwards. If you try to pull out, they go in even further, deeper. And then it throws a couple loops and starts squeezing incredibly powerfully. The prey is trying to get its breath, and with every breath, those toils just tighten up even more until cardiac arrest. Here you can see an anaconda making a meal of a capybara. The snake squeezes the animal, then swallows it whole. Eyewitness reports from around the world describe monster snakes reaching nearly 150 feet, or half a football field in length. These giants could be anacondas or pythons, two of the largest snake species in the world. Unlike other snake species, which kill their prey with poisonous venom, pythons and anacondas are constrictors, snakes that squeeze their prey to death. Pythons are native to Asia and Africa, anacondas to South America. No one has ever produced hard evidence of a python or anaconda longer than 30 feet. Monster Quest is sending biologist Jesus Rivas deep into Venezuela to hunt for just such a giant, an anaconda bigger than any found before. He's flown from Caracas, the Venezuelan capital, to the town of Barinas. From here, it's a three-hour drive into the Llanos. Los Llanos, in Spanish, means plains. It is a 200,000 square mile swath of wild savanna. The largest anacondas I found was about 17, 18 feet long. However, there have been a couple of stories people have told me that refer to a very large snake, probably much larger than anyone that I have caught. And I had no reason to disbelieve this story. The first stop on Rivas's expedition is here the tiny town of Montecal. It's the final outpost before leaving civilization behind. He's looking for clues from the locals about what they've seen. And he's led to this man. He just told me a story actually quite a remarkable, something that happened to his cousin 35 years ago. The man claims that his 13-year-old cousin had gone down to the local river alone an anaconda approached. In the water, the snake was all but invisible. Without warning, it attacked. The anaconda wrapped its massive coils around the girl. There was no chance of escape.
the snake squeezed the girl to death, then proceeded to swallow her whole. They found her, they killed it, they cut it open, and sure enough, they found the little girl uh, in the stomach of the snake. That was the largest snake I had ever seen. It was at least 45 feet long. 45 feet is a giant snake, and it's just what Rivas is looking for. From this town, it's an hour's drive to this remote ranch called El Sidra. This will be Rivas' base of operations. Because anacondas can thrive on both land and in water, Rivas has a plan to search both for the elusive giant snake. He's pioneered a low-tech but daring technique to search for these predators. Feeling for them with his bare feet. He'll also be armed with motion-triggered cameras and the latest military-grade sonar to help him peer into deeper waters. Existing evidence of giant snakes is sparse. One of the earliest and most famous accounts comes from British explorer Percy Fawcett, who in 1907 says he encountered a 62-foot anaconda in Brazil. Later expeditions came back with fantastic stories of killer snakes. But more recently, this series of photographs surfaced on the internet. They appear to show a man swallowed whole by a giant python. But are these photos hoaxes or real evidence of giant man-eating snakes? Experts will analyze this evidence. If you look at the ribs, they are facing towards the back and that would be consistent with the snake swallowing towards the tail. The pythons in these photos are native to Asia and Africa. But there could be thousands of them right here in the United States, specifically in the Everglades of South Florida. This will be the site of another Monster Quest expedition. With more than one and a half million acres of wilderness, this is a perfect hiding place for giant snakes, as seen in these shocking pictures taken in 2005. You can see a 13-foot Burmese python split almost in two after swallowing an alligator whole. On the upper right is the snake's head. On the left, its tail. The alligator's tail protrudes from the snake's ruptured belly. To look at an animal, for instance, like a python feeding on an alligator that it would not find in its normal habitat shows that the animal would adapt to what's available to it. A snake's digestive systems are incredible. They can digest almost anything and evidence suggests that these eating machines are on the move. This is also a Burmese python, and it's invaded this man's suburban Miami backyard. His struggle with it was captured by a local news crew. Fearing for his exotic fish, the owner and a friend jumping into action, trying to pounce on the python, but charming this snake didn't go so well. It was no isolated incident. Just a few days earlier, this python was discovered nearby with a swollen belly. What turned out to be a 15-pound pet cat named Francis. These incidents are becoming so common that Miami-Dade County now has an emergency unit to respond to such calls. It's called the Anti-Venom Unit. This is a big problem here in South Florida. And these are big snakes that can hurt a young child as well as a teenage boy or even a full-grown adult. Handling these snakes is dangerous, even for professionals. How did pythons native to Southeast Asia end up in these Miami neighborhoods? For many years now, these snakes have been very popular pets. Ron McGill of the Miami Metro Zoo has been studying Florida wildlife for nearly 30 years. The unfortunate thing is they purchase these animals when they're hatchlings or newborns in pet shops and they look very manageable. 
But when pythons get too big for their cages, owners release them into the Everglades. And in 1992, when Hurricane Andrew hit here, destroying homes and pet stores, hundreds of young pythons escaped into the wild. Nobody could have predicted what happened next. Because of our climate, it's so conducive to these animals when they are released or they escape, that they thrive. Not only do they thrive, they reproduce. Just how many pythons are now living in the Everglades is unknown. But there's no question the number is growing. A large constrictor can have 50 to 60 live babies that are on their own. So really, I don't see a way short of a long, deep freeze in South Florida where these animals are going to be eradicated. McGill has evidence that this new population of snakes are about to become giants. This is a 20-foot skin of a reticulated python that washed up on a beach in Miami. An animal that started out as a pet, but now is indicative of a problem that we're experiencing here in South Florida. And the South Florida environment is extremely conducive to the growth of these snakes. It's a warm, human environment, has an incredible prey base, whether it be raccoons, possums, waterfowl, uh, and are quite supportive for snakes reaching maximum size. The implications to people here in Florida could be lethal. A snake this size in a residential area can pretty much prey on anything he wants. This snake could kill me that fast if it wanted to. Wildlife biologist Joe Wazalewski is no stranger to giant snakes. In 1989, he helped capture this 22-foot python, the biggest snake ever found in the United States. Now he's going to lead a hunt here in Florida to find a giant even bigger than that. Wazalewski believes that giant snakes are thriving in the Everglades and may start crossing into residential areas. Now he's looking for evidence. But snakes, even giant ones, are elusive. First, he will set up motion sensing cameras. You know, this is actually perfect. If I were to be a python in this neighborhood, this is where I'd want to be. Nice shaded houses all over. Everglades right there. This could be the spot. The place he's chosen is the border between the Everglades National Park and the densely populated suburbs south of Miami. They'll be going from point A to point B. And if there's any movement in front of this camera, it will catch it. Now he'll drive along this boundary in search of evidence that full-grown pythons, upwards of 20 feet, are in fact leaving the Everglades and invading these neighborhoods. If the pythons are in the Everglades, it's just a matter of crossing a road to get in to these urban areas. Will Wazalewski find the giant snake he's looking for? Yeah, wait, hold on, there's one. In South Florida, there are signs that dozens of neighborhoods around Miami could be under attack from giant killer snakes. Experts pointed these photos as evidence. They were taken by a wildlife researcher in the Everglades in 2005. They show a 13-foot Burmese python, which appears to have burst open after swallowing a six-foot alligator whole. Snakes' digestive systems are incredible. They can digest almost anything. People are speculating, well, that the python just exploded because the alligator was too big. That's really not the case at all. What most likely happened is that this alligator was swallowed Either a claw or a tooth or something caused some type of perforation in the python's gut, caused an infection which led to the death of the snake. If pythons are growing large enough to swallow alligators whole, then they could be a threat to people living nearby. A python that gets to any of significant size in a place like the Everglades will feed on any warm-blooded mammal of any size that it can kill and swallow. They can adapt, they can branch out, they can be found in suburban areas. A 2007 U.S. Geological Survey reports that as the Earth continues to warm, the to California. Joe Wazalewski thinks that's happening already. We really could be on the verge of a real epidemic with these pythons. Just because you don't see them does not necessarily mean they're not here. What it does mean is they're hiding pretty good on us. It's been dry for the last few months, up until a couple nights ago we got some really good rains. And 
with the rains coming in, that sort of wakes all the wildlife up. Right now is the perfect time to look for pythons. A thousand miles away in Venezuela, anaconda expert Jesus Rivas is about to begin his search for a giant snake. This region of South America is a hotbed for giant snake sightings. From neighboring Brazil came one of history's most widely sighted encounters. It came from this man, Colonel Percy Fawcett. On January 7, 1907, Fawcett was on assignment with Britain's Royal Geographical Society. He described the encounter in his journal. We were drifting easily along in the sluggish current when there appeared a triangular head and several feet of undulating body. It was a giant anaconda. I sprang from my rifle and, hardly waiting to aim, smashed a 44 soft-nosed bullet into its spine. We stepped ashore and approached the reptile with caution. As far as it was possible to measure, a length of 45 feet lay out of the water and 17 feet in it, making a total length of 62 feet. This drawing and Fawcett's account are the only existing evidence of this giant snake. In his search for new evidence, Jesus Rivas will use cutting-edge sonar imaging technology, originally designed for the U.S. Navy to detect suspicious divers in restricted waters. The device is called the Ditson, or Dual Frequency Identification Sonar. Ed Belcher and his team at Soundmetrics in Seattle, Washington, designed this device. This is an acoustic camera. It uses sound instead of light to generate an image. Rivas will encounter zero visibility conditions in his search for a giant anaconda. This device will be his eyes underwater. Belcher places a brick in the tank and clouds the water to demonstrate the Ditson's imaging capabilities. To the naked eye, the brick is invisible. But the Ditson sees it clearly. Now, this brick is only about four feet away. But in Venezuela, while you're looking for snakes, they'll be probably 30, 40 feet away, and we'll still be able to see those snakes. Once Rivas finds a snake, he'll be able to measure it to see if he's found an actual giant. Sonar has never been used before to search for giant snakes. And what Rivas finds could raise the evidentiary bar. Joining Rivas on his expedition are his old partners, Victor and Ramon. They'll be setting motion-triggered camera traps, but they must first track down bait to lure the giant snakes. For that, they'll need to collect musk from another anaconda. Musk is a mysterious glandular excretion that Rivas believes could attract other snakes. Nobody knows what the musk is for. It could be for defense, because it's very stinky, but also it could have a social function, attraction. Ahead, something in the road catches their eye. It's the track of an anaconda. I can see the print of the scales here. Dirt in this side tells me the snake is going that way. And because of that print size, I can tell this snake was about eight to nine feet long. When I see a track this fresh, I know it's only an hour or two old. So this anaconda has to be nearby. Anacondas inhabit shallow swamps where they stalk their prey. Five years ago, this particular swamp was the site of a near fatal attack. <laughs> This man, Jose de Esteban, is a cowboy at El Cidrajo, the same ranch where Rivas is based. He is one of the few locals to tangle with an anaconda and live to tell about it. De Esteban had heard a report of a large anaconda by the roadside and went to investigate. I was out there looking for one and I saw it on the ground. And without even thinking, I bent out to see it closer, and before I knew it, it got me. 
De Esteban struggled to keep the anaconda's coils from wrapping around his body. After nearly five minutes, he finally wrestled himself free. The team begins their search in the same swamp where De Esteban was attacked. They can't see them, but they know that anacondas are here. In their hunt, they use only poles and their bare feet. Rivas's unorthodox methods have earned him the nickname the Barefoot Biologist. As he searches, his only safety net is his instinct and experience. This water is not very deep. If I catch an anaconda in a water that is too deep, she might have the upper hand. I don't want that. This is snake here, not a very big one. There's another one right here. Kaboom! Victor! These anacondas are too small for musk extraction. But there's evidence that a bigger anaconda could be nearby. This is a crack right here. It seems like this anaconda will be about 9, 10 feet, maybe that big around. Despite the fresh trail, Rivas cannot find the snake. The team is losing daylight. The pressure is on. Rivas discovers something. But it's not an anaconda. Not a snake. Not what I want to find. It's a small but very unhappy crocodile. The day seems all but over. But then, a discovery. Oh, it's very strong. For a small snake. Now, this baby is actually putting the squeeze on my arm now. If it's any harder, I wouldn't be able to withstand it. This feisty anaconda is just right for Rivas to extract its musk. At first light, the team will set the camera traps and test the sonar. I can see how fat he is. And in Florida, a monster quest demonstration goes terribly wrong. He's got me. Snakes have been the object of fascination and worship throughout history. From the pharaoh's tombs of ancient Egypt, to Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent god of the Aztecs, to the Naga, a mythical river serpent in the Mekong Delta of Southeast Asia. Two million snakes are the embodiment of evil and a source of paralyzing fear. That fear is very real in Venezuela and in Florida where there could be evidence of giant pythons and anacondas. And two expeditions are underway to find them. In South Florida, the investigation is tracking escaped pet pythons that have for years been thriving and growing in the seclusion of the Everglades. But there are signs that they're now invading suburban neighborhoods. Captain Ernie Jolson with Miami-Dade's anti-venom unit has seen it firsthand. I've been doing this for nine and a half years and we're getting more and more of these calls for recoveries every year. 
we foresee in the future that we will definitely see larger snakes, more calls on these larger constrictors than we have in the past. Come back, come back, come back around. The calls that we are receiving, they are a lot of large constrictors, seven to 10 to 12 foot long. This year, I expect it to get worse. Captain Jilson and his partner, Captain Chuck Seifert, agreed to demonstrate for months to quest how they capture these deadly predators. This is a 10-foot python caught on a recent call, and it's not happy. They try to subdue it by covering its head with this bag. But this python is intent on escape. They need to act fast. It's pissed at me. And as a last resort, Jilson abandons his tools for his bare hands. Maybe I can get him to chill. He needs to sneak up behind the snake, then grab it right below its head to stay clear of its jaws. I'm gonna walk around this way, since he's fixated there, come from behind him and grab him. He's got me. The snake bites Jilson, clamping down on his wrist. He has no way to break free. He's got a good hold on me. Can you push it in a little bit? Nope. Oh, he's got the vein, dude. The snake is coiling around their bodies. Seifert has to use brute force to pry the jaws open, tearing the skin from Jilson's wrist. Yep. Ah, oh, he got me good, dude. Go get an ace. Ah, yep. Yeah, it hurts like heck right now. They got real sharp teeth. As I approached him, my mistake was I didn't grab him close enough to his head. When I did grab, I slid back, and he was able to circle around. He came back on me and bit me in the arm. And as you can see, they got a full mouth of teeth. He got me with his inner and his outer teeth. As Jilson discovered, a constrictor's jaws are one of nature's deadliest contraptions. Both pythons and anacondas have six rows of razor-sharp teeth that curve backwards like a hundred individual fish hooks. The more the prey struggles, the deeper the teeth sink into its flesh. This snake was ten feet long, hardly a giant. But if it was a giant, could it have killed and swallowed Jilson whole? MonsterQuest has compiled this photographic evidence from the internet that suggests it could be possible. No one has come forward to say where and when these pictures were taken, but many are convinced that they are evidence of giant man-eating snakes. Now Bob Henderson and Ron McGill analyze this evidence. In looking at this image, if you look at the ribs, they are facing towards the back and that would be consistent with the snake swallowing from the head being this way towards the tail. As demonstrated here with this python feeding on a dead rabbit, the head is the most compact and manageable part of the body for a snake to get its jaws around. That's why snakes always swallow head first. The same would be true for a human victim. Now what allows the snake to open its mouth very widely are special bones that it has back here. It's called a quadrate bone. The quadrate bone at the back of the skull allows the jaws of the snake to drop straight down to open unusually wide. Then the separation between the two bottom jaw bones allows the mouth to expand even further to three times the width of its own head. But Henderson isn't sure the snake in this photo has swallowed a person. It's based on the size of the the person and the fact that it doesn't seem to have any particular bruising or anything like that. Everything looks just very, very much intact for it to have been the victim of a snake attack and to have been ingested by a large snake. A snake swallowing its prey is a slow but violent process. A snake has no limbs to push food into its mouth. Instead, it has rows of curved teeth that move independently, pulling the prey little by little into its stomach. 
The condition of this body appears inconsistent with that of a snake's victim. While we can't definitively say that it's a forgery, it does give us pause. This photograph, however, seems to tell a different story. Now, this photograph here is more indicative of what I think could easily happen. If this is the shoulder here and the arm here, this would have to be the head. This photo was taken in 1995 by a policeman in Malaysia. He claims it shows a man lying face down with a, his head in its mouth. I think the snake could have a real hard time getting around uh, what looked like they might be fairly broad shoulders. Prey species would bleed a lot from those wounds. And here you see that this snake has struggled. It has tried to go back and forth, trying to get over those shoulders, which is spreading this blood, spreading this injury. Once the snake swallows this man's head, the shoulders could prove to be an insurmountable obstacle. The average width of an adult's shoulders is about two feet. But if the snake could get its mouth around the shoulders, nothing could stop it from swallowing a person whole. A 30-foot python probably has the ability to open its mouth two to three feet wide. This would lead you to believe that, yes, it could swallow an adult human being. The best place to find these monster-sized snakes is going to be in the remotest areas of the world. Back in Venezuela, Rivas extracts the musk of the anaconda he caught the night before. He believes the musk could contain pheromones that will attract other anacondas, hopefully a giant. So maybe if this musk has a social function, with the camera traps, we might be able to find bigger, better, more anacondas. Rivas positions and aims the cameras using the onboard laser sight. Each is equipped with a motion sensing trigger and a flash. These cameras will capture whatever crosses their path, day or night. Now the team will test the sonar. Cool. I can see him, I can see his arms, his feet. I can see how fat he is. Let me measure how fat he is. Almost half a meter. To lose some weight, buddy. After the tests, Rivas heads into the field. This will be the first time such technology has ever been used to hunt for anacondas, and it could lead these researchers to the discovery of a lifetime. The biggest snake Rivas has found here was 17 feet. Could an even bigger anaconda, a giant, be lurking beneath these waters? Oh, this has something there right in front of us. That looks like a snake. Look, look, aguantalo, aguantalo. It really looks like a snake down here. Around the world, legends are told of giant snakes measuring 150 feet or more. Half the length of a football field. Anaconda expert Jesus Rivas and his team are on the hunt for just such a monster snake in Venezuela. On land, they've baited and set motion sensing camera traps. Their search now moves to the water. If an anaconda grows to be too large, it will be limited to deeper water. That's why I think that in these places, I might be able to find larger animals. Visibility under this water is almost zero. But here, the Ditson sonar sees everything. Oh, there's are fishes. A whole bunch of fishes, look. All right, piranhas. Then something much bigger appears on the sonar. There's some shadow here. And I see the bubbles right in front of me, but I'm trying to see it under the water with the sonar. What Riva sees is the outline of a crocodile. And it's huge. I can actually measure how big it is. It shows now about three and a half meters long. That is 14, 15 feet long. Big girl. Rivas continues his search for a giant snake. If he finds one, he may have to jump in to catch it. If the water is anywhere, I'm thinking about my chest. It might not be very wise of me to get into the water. If the water is shallower, then I might have to give it a go. 
Suddenly, a promising shape appears on the sonar screen. This has something there right in front of us. Oh, that looks like a snake. Look, look. Rivas abandons the sonar to search for the snake by hand. But he can't feel it. What Rivas saw on the sonar was the dense aquatic vegetation on the river bottom, not a giant snake. The sun is setting, but he is undeterred. Like the sonar, anacondas can see in the dark, and they will remain active throughout the night. Back in South Florida, where the search for a giant snake continues, the day is also coming to an end. But that could be good news for biologist Joe Wazalewski. As the sun goes down, uh, the roads stay warmer. The, the snakes, pythons in this case, will begin to migrate across. And that's usually when they move, is uh, right after sunset and into the night. His search begins to look even more promising. This really is a good road. It, it's sort of secluded. There's a little bit of an orchard here, there's some nurseries, there's homes, and um, this is really perfect to find the python. His intuition is right. There you go. I think I see something. Yeah, wait. Hold on, there's one. Wasilewski finds a wild python that most likely escaped from the Everglades. Oh yeah. I got it. Well, well, that's no wonder. It's about eight feet long and about as mean as a python can be. I'll tell you what, if, if this were one 15, 20, 25 feet in length, there's no way I could get it off. It, the, the power of these animals is just absolutely amazing. Out of the Everglades and into this residential area, this python could prove deadly to anybody it encountered. If this one were to coil around someone's neck, this snake could actually choke off your trachea and your esophagus and you could not breathe. Believe it or not, a snake this size. The escalating presence of snakes this size could mean there are even bigger snakes migrating out of the Everglades. The big ones are out there, there's no question about it. But your chances are, if you see a python, it's going to be one around this size, simply because of the numbers game. There's hundreds of this size to one or two huge ones. We think it's a young population, and in the next few years is when they're going to start getting to these really massive sizes. But, could be, right now, we could see a big one tonight, tomorrow. A storm rolls in, and the rain puts a halt to Wasilewski's search. But the camera traps he said earlier could provide what he's hoping for. Evidence of a giant snake in these neighborhoods. And back in Venezuela, Rivas presses on through the night and is startled by what he sees next. Oh wow, there's a big guy right here. Right, he right ahead of us, right there. Could this be their giant? In the wild plains of Venezuela, and in the South Florida suburbs, evidence of giant snakes exists. In Venezuela, this cowboy narrowly escaped with his life. And this man says his 13-year-old cousin was swallowed whole by a 45-foot anaconda. In Florida, escape pythons are invading neighborhoods, feeding on pets, even taking on the authority sent to capture them. So far, no one's ever been killed here by one of these escaped pythons. However, these photographs prove they've become giants large enough to swallow alligators whole. And these photographs, widely circulated on the internet, could be evidence that they are man-eaters. 
Although they can't be authenticated, experts agree it could have happened. I think if a 30-foot constrictor, an anaconda, a python did exist and it did come across a human being and it was hungry, there'd be nothing that would stop it from, from swallowing that human being. History is filled with accounts of giant snakes, some over 150 feet in length. Can science now prove the existence of such a snake? In the wilds of Venezuela, motion sensing cameras are keeping watch on land. And by the light of the full moon, Jesus Rivas continues his search of the waters. Anacondas are very patient animals. If you want to deal with them, you just need to be just as patient as they are. Even in the pitch black waters, the state of the art sonar sees everything. Rivas is hoping for a glimpse of the snake's distinctive coils. And he gets one. Oh, wow, there's a big guy right here, right ahead, right ahead of us. Victor, check this out. Check this out. This really looks like an anaconda right here, right in this patch of vegetation. Check the highway. Is this a giant anaconda? Victor, aguanta, aguanta. It's a really big thing right there. That is a big guy. No nada, But the shape disappears into the dense underwater vegetation. The team combs this section of the river again. But can't find the snake. No hay nada. But there is hope. The sonar has recorded the entire search. And back at the ranch, Rivas can now analyze the footage. You'll also be able to review any still pictures from the motion sensing cameras. This must seem like it took a lot of pictures. The memory cards on the cameras are full. But windblown leaves, birds, and capybaras are all that set them off. Not any snake, not any of the things I was looking for. But the sonar images could prove to be promising. It's a mysterious shadow. It looks like a curl about five feet across. It would be a big snake, but I can't really make out what it is. A snake five feet across would truly be a giant. But what Riva sees is just an illusion on the river bottom. See, the aquatic vegetation really resembled anacondas. Many times I saw something, and when I checked it out in person, there wasn't anything. Rivas remains convinced the eyewitness reports here are true, and he'll be back to search again. I have heard a few stories that I have no reason to disbelieve, and they all report anacondas significantly larger than what I have caught. So whether they can grow larger, yes, I believe it's possible. I would love to see it. Back in Florida, Joe Wazalewski captured this eight-foot-long python in a residential neighborhood. Now, for the first time, he'll check his motion-sensing cameras for evidence of even bigger pythons leaving the Everglades behind. Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, there's the dog. So the camera does work. Whoa, look at that. They're, they're, wait a minute, that's the whole snake. Wow. Now that is a great shot. There's the head, the tail. That thing is at least 12 feet long. 